So questions where we use momentum and energy. Key idea, so we can use work and energy concepts together. In fact, the odds are very good. I'm going to, in fact, more than good, 100%. I'm going to give you a question on your test where there is both a change in height somewhere in there, which means you better use energy to find the speed, and there's a collision, which means you better use momentum to find the final velocity. We apply momentum conservation to collisions. We use energy to analyze, and then it says or, the word or shouldn't be there. We use momentum to analyze pendulums and curved ramps if there's a change in height. And a complex problem must be carefully broken down into steps. So here's the first one. It's a very famous one in physics nerd terms. It's called the ballistic pendulum. I don't know if you ever asked yourself, how did they actually calculate things like bullet speeds 80 years ago before the advent of radar? You certainly can't do it with a stopwatch because your human reaction time doesn't work. What they would do instead is they would fire a bullet into a wood block. And if they knew the mass of the bullet, which was pretty easy to weigh, that they could do. And if they knew the mass of the block, then they would watch from the side and they would see how high the block went up. And if you knew how high the block went up, you knew how much potential energy it had at the top. Yes? How much kinetic energy would it have at the top? Zero. So you could then work your way backwards and say, how much kinetic energy did it have here? All of it. And then you could say, oh, how much kinetic energy did it have here from the bullet? How much velocity did the bullet impart? Now here, we're going to be doing it backwards. We know how fast the bullet is traveling, Brett. We're going to ask, how high is this going? So there's going to be two parts. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to analyze the collision. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to analyze the swing, the change in height, uh, conservation of energy. Is that okay, Mitsu? Is that okay? Yeah? You with me? Because I don't think you were here. You good? You back? Yes? Okay. So we have a collision. Bullet hits the block. Wham! Sum of all the initial momentum equals the sum of all the final momentum. Before the collision, what was moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Mass 1, mass 2. Sorry? And you know what? Let's call this mass 1. Let's call this mass 2. I was going to use B for bullet, but then B for ballast would just be confusing. B for block would also just be confusing. Ah, heck, I'll use mass 1, mass 2. So before the collision, we have the momentum of object 1 initial. After the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both stuck together or separate? What's the fancy word for stuck together? Is it elastic or inelastic? Think it through. Elastic, rubber band, bounce, bounce apart, inelastic. This is an inelastic collision. Okay, I am going to use those terms on quizzes and tests, so you need to be able to use the same chain of reasoning that I just did. Or you can memorize them, but... I usually just think it through that way. So it's going to be the momentum of both. Final. This collision, is it in a nice straight line, or are there angles looking at the diagram or in the question? What do you think? Between here and here, you can see it. there's some kind of an angle or something like that. So what do you think? That, that's not the collision. That's, the, that's part two. In the collision, which is right here, nice straight lines, which means no trig. We'll let to the right be positive, to the left be negative. We can use good old Kayla normal equation solving. We can say mass 1 V1 initial equals mass 1 plus mass 2 the final, because momentum is mass times velocity. And what I want to try and find here, John, is how fast they're moving after the collision, because that's going to tell me how much kinetic energy this guy has, 
In fact, if we draw a little line over here, Brett, this part, because there's a change in height, is going to be That's the second part of this question. And right here, what's the potential energy? Zero. We're going to let the ground be right there. And at the very, very top of the swing for a split second, what's the kinetic energy? Zero. In fact, we're going to get this. A half mv initial squared equals m g h final hey nicole what happens to the m's here they cancel not but here they cancel as long as there's no friction did they mention friction or heat or anything like that? great in fact if they want us to find the height i think the height is going to end up being vi squared over 2g, is that right? You would divide the g, our vendor, yeah? And I made the 1 half a 2 on the bottom. What's vi? Brandon, it's v final after the collision. That's why we have to do this in two parts. What's my initial velocity when I start to change my height, Matt? Well, that's how fast you're going after they collided. And the mistake most kids make on these is they forget that there's a collision. They want to go, oh, the, ma the velocity is 100. They want to put 100 there. Nope. When this bullet hits this block, things are going to slow down. So, is that okay, Brett? One block, bullet sticks inside the block. They swing up together. Okay. Sorry, I should have explained that. So here's part one. Part two is the collision. Part three is the swinging. I didn't explain that. That's my fault. No, it's not. I should have explained that. Not okay. So let's go back to this side. Let's find V final. What is V final? Everything's in a nice straight line, so I'm not drawing my vector pictures here. Much nicer, Bree. So how would I get V final by itself? Straight divide. Hey, I like that. V final is going to be M1 V1 initial divided by M1 plus M2. The final velocity after the collision is going to be mass of the first object, 20 grams, so 0 0.02. Velocity, tell me it was a nice number, 100, divided by 4.02, the mass of the block and the mass of the bullet. After the collision, how fast will the block and the bullet move off together? get 0 0.4975123 blah 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 yep I'll go 0.4975 because it's not my final answer I'll carry a few extra sig figs in fact I'll use that exact answer on my calculator meters per second and this is now your initial velocity once they start to move off together. So does that make sense? They hit, sticks together, and it starts to swing up. Okay? So if I want to find how high this goes, it's going to be 0.4975 squared all over 2 times, John, negative 9.8 or 9.8? Convince me. What are we finding? What are we using? What are we doing? 
What was our initial approach? What did we call this? We called this a law. No, this is not momentum. No, no, no. This was thunder and lightning. What was this law called, folks? Conservation of conservation of what? Conservation of what? Energy, worker, scalar. Sorry, energy, scalar or vector? So, John, negative or not? No, not. Absolutely. By the way, if you did, you'd get a negative height, which wouldn't make sense. Okay? So, you could also have just figured out by doing the math. Plain old 9.8. How high will this go? Oh, heck, Mr. Duke, use your answer. Answer squared divided by bracket 2 times 9.8. And I get it going about not very high, 0 0.013. Meters. About that high. About that high. So, back to this. Now, here's what they would have done in the old days to calculate the speed of the bullet. That's what I said. This is how they did this. Instead of me telling you VI squared, and finding H, can you see from here, if you knew H, could you find VI? Yes? And if you knew VI, you would put that right in here for V final, and you could solve for the initial velocity of the bullet by dividing by the mass of the bullet. It was a nice way, it was a nice way to be able to calculate the speed of a bullet without using a stopwatch. And it was reasonably accurate. You would probably repeat the experiment a few times to, you know, sources of error, average out your error, hopefully. But very nice. So there's an example of a combination momentum and energy question. I sort of like that question, and what I mean is there's two questions here that I sort of like, one of which you'll almost certainly see, depending on which version of the test I get. So I'll say I like this question, I like this question, but depends which version you get. And this is nice because it's like bullets and ballistics. Oh, boy. Example two. Example two. If mass one equals mass two equals mass three equals four kilograms, so every mass is four kilograms, and mass one has an initial velocity of 3.2 meters per second, find the final speed of mass three if the height is 0.82. Okay? Oh, and all collisions are hit and stick. What's the fancy word for hit and stick? Let's write that just to remind us. Okay. What's this going to do to that? Is there a collision? Yeah? Momentum. Then they move off, and what do you see right here? Is there a change in height? Energy. Then they hit M3. Did I say hit M3? Collision momentum. This question is going to have three parts. There's going to be an initial momentum, a conservation of energy, Sean, in the middle. And even though it's curvy, I don't care because conservation of energy, John, is a scalar. And then a collision. And what I like is I noticed, Jeanette, the collisions are all in nice straight lines. No uh, tip to tail stuff from last day. Okay? So I'm going to divide this up into three parts. The first collision. Since it, I said collision, I'm going to write this. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? How do I know mass 2 is not moving? Oh, they put the word rest underneath there. Okay, fair enough. And you know what? Since mass 1 and mass 2 and mass 3 are all the same mass, I'm not going to call them mass 1, mass 2, and mass 3. Why don't I just call every one of them M? Because maybe some stuff will cancel along the way. Okay? I'm going to have 
M V one. Oh, the initial. Sorry. Equals, and I skipped this step. I didn't actually write out the equation. I'm going to see because this is nice and linear. If we can take a little shortcut here. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Both stuck together or separate? M plus M V final. By the way, what would a shorter way to have written M plus M B? I could have written 2M. I'm going to on my next line. Let's find out how fast these two guys move off together. The final velocity after the collision is going to be M vi divided by 2m. Hey, conveniently, you know what happens to the m's here? How many m's on top? One. How many m's on the bottom? One. No, well, sorry. Two m's. I'm using math 12s with the exponents. The m's are going to cancel. A 2 is going to be left behind. In fact, I'm going to get this. Uh, what was the initial velocity? Scroll down. What does it say in your diagram or in your instruct in your thirty-two? They move off at sixteen meters per second. I'll put a big one right here on my diagram so I know this is what we're talking: the collision. I think the second part we're going to talk about is this section going up the hill. Mitchell, is there a change in height? Energy. Are any of these zero? Is your initial kinetic zero? No. What about your initial potential? Oh, yeah, on the ground. What about your final kinetic? Are you stopped at the top of the hill? I don't think so. What about your final? Oh, did I say top of the hill? Then your final potential can't be zero because I said top of the hill, didn't I? A half m. Now it's actually going to be a half two m. The initial squared equals two m g h plus, or hang on, Mr. Duick, do kinetic energy first. A half 2m v final squared plus 2m gh, because it's both masses, and we said if you have one mass. But you notice, is there a 2m in everything? Turns out the 2m's are going to cancel. I really could have gotten away with being sloppy and just putting an m there and saying, yeah, no, I know the masses are going to cancel, because they don't mention friction or heat. And what I want to find is, how fast we're traveling at the top of the hill. Now, you may remember what I liked to do, because I wasn't a big fan of the halves, is I like to put a 2 there, a 2 there, and a 2 there. Which would cancel there, which would cancel there, and just stick around there. I would get this. The initial squared equals the final squared plus 2gh. And it's this V final that's going to become the V initial in part two. And we want to find V final. Brandon, how would I get V final by itself? The 2GH, and then what? That would give me V final squared. Square root. V final is going to be V initial squared minus 2GH square root. John, am I going to put a negative 9.8 or a 9.8 in for G? Why? Scalar. Okay. So I'm going to get the square root of 16 squared minus 2 times 9.8 times... What's H? Oh, it tells me in the question. 0.82. Yep. What are we trying to find here? We're trying to find V final. 
right? And yeah, it does matter. Big time. Uh, what was the height? 0.82, is that what it said? Okay. So once both of these, hey, let's call them roller coasters for that, bumper cars that stuck together, train cars, make it up this hill, how fast will they be traveling? You get 15.45, sorry, 0.49. Yeah, not a very big hill. They don't lose much kinetic energy. They don't lose much speed. 15.49. Okay. Then they collide. That's going to be the third part of this equation. There is a collision. The sum of all the initial momentum equals the sum of all the final momentum. Before the collision, what's moving? I think these two guys stuck together. Yes? Two M V initial. And you'll notice I'm back to vector notation because this is not a scalar. They collide. After the collision, what's moving? I think all of them stuck together or separate. What would the mass of all of them be? 3m. V final. And this V final, Brett, is not this V final. This V final is actually going to become V initial right there. Hey, once again, the M's do cancel, which is kind of nice. They didn't mean to tell me that it was a 4, although I, I, if you'd left the 4s in, you would get the same answer. You just be doing more typing on your calculator, and I'm lazy. How would I get V final by itself? Is this in a nice straight line, Nicole, or are there angles in this last collision? Looks, the ground looks level. Good, great, great, great. So how would I get V final by itself, Nicole? Divide by 3. Absolutely. V final is going to be 2 times V initial divided by 3. It's going to be 2 times 15.49 divided by 3. Now this question here is not fair game. Three things? No. Two things? Yes. In fact, a great question would be giving you this, ask you to find V final. I think that would be totally fair game. Uh, 2 times this answer divided by 3 and I get 10.3 meters per second. Okay. Direction? Oh, wait a minute. Sean, what did they ask for? The final what? No, what did they ask for? The final what? Read the question. Speed. Oh, I don't need to worry about to the right or east or... Yeah, good. Turn the page. This is the second question that I like. This is Mr. Duick attempting to do art. This is why Mr. Duick usually uses computer graphics. Okay. A roller coaster, or maybe you, you can think a mining car on a track. With an initial velocity of 8.6 meters per second, rolls down a track with a height of 18 meters. It strikes a second identical roller coaster that has an initial velocity of 24 meters per second. The coasters stick together and continue up the next hill. How high can the roller coasters reach? Well, 
how much kinetic energy will they have at the top? Zero. So if I figure out how much kinetic energy they have here, that's all going to be potential energy and I can find the height. How much kinetic energy depends on how fast they're all going. What does that depend on? Depends on how fast this guy's going at the bottom of the hill. Did you hear me say bottom of the hill, change in height, energy? We're going to again have three sections. I said to you three sections wasn't fair game. Maybe I fibbed. The first section is down the hill. The second section is the collision. The third section is top of the hill. So let's do the first section. From here to here, is there a collision? So momentum or energy? Oh, because also change in height. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Are any of these zero? Final potential. We'll call that ground level. A half mv initial squared plus m g h initial equals a half m v final squared. Yay, the m's cancel. Yay, Mr. Duke's going to multiply everything by 2. Yay, the 2 and the half and the 2 and the half cancel. Brett, do I have v final by itself already? So I don't need to worry about which way I'm going to subtract or anything like that, except i got to get rid of the squared. How? Turns out v final at the bottom of the hill is going to be the square root of v initial squared plus 2 g h. V final is going to be the square root of, what did I say V initial was? 8.6 plus 2 times 9.8 times the height, 18. How fast are we going at the bottom of the hill? Point six squared plus two times nine point eight times eighteen square root. You get twenty point six five eight. Nodding. Okay. Twenty point six five eight. Is this my final answer? No, I'll carry a few extra sig figs then. All right. What happens right here? a collision. Did you hear me say collision? Well then, the sum of all the initial momentum has to equal the sum of all the final momentum. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both stuck together or separate? Before the collision, separate. Momentum of the first guy initial plus momentum of the second guy initial. Wham! There's the collision. After the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Stuck together or separate? Stuck together, looking at my terribly drawn diagram. Momentum both final. That section of track... Does it look fairly level to you? Well, it was supposed to, but I can't draw to save my life. It is, so we're not pulling out the trig. We're not going all vectory tip to tail. Momentum of this is going to be mass 1 V1 initial plus mass 2 V2 initial equals mass 1 plus mass 2 V final.
Brett, how would I get V final by itself? Okay, I can because it's a straight line. Nice. So, if I hear you correctly, sir, you're going to say V final is going to be the first mass times its initial velocity plus the second mass times its initial velocity, which makes sense. That's how much momentum I have before collision. Divided by mass 1 plus mass 2. Let's see if I can fit this in on one line. Mass 1 was... Oh, it says they're identical, so 250. Velocity 1 initial, 20.658 plus 250 times 2.4. Screen froze? Bear with me for a moment. Yeah, I'm trying the wireless thing again. I bought a new one. I'm going to try it over the holidays. To, found one on sale for cheap from a different company. Let's see if it's a bit more consistent. And we should be back in about three, two, one. Should be a beep from over here. Hey, it is. Screen goes black. Screen is back. Okay. We're back? Yep. Uh, 2.4 divided by 250 plus 250, although I guess I could have written 500 because that math I can do in my head. After the collision, how fast do they move off together for a split second? Let's see. Bracket 250 times my last answer plus 250 times 2.4 divided by 500. You get 11.53? No? Yeah? 11.53? Okay. That's after the collision. They start rolling off together, but what do they hit right away? A hill. Did you hear me say hill? That sounds like a change in height. You know how we're going to solve the third part? To find out how high these guys go? Energy. So, part three. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Are any of these zero? Sorry? Potential energy initial? I think we're starting out on the ground, absolutely. Is kinetic energy initial zero? No, 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 we have, we have speed. Anything else? Zero. Ah, at the very top for a split second, how fast will you be going? Zero. Oh, this is actually a nice easy equation then. A lot less work than the other ones. We're going to get a half m v initial squared equals m g h final. Now the m we're talking about is 500. It's 250 plus 250. But do you notice, Brianne, here I could be a sloppy because what's going to happen to the masses? <gasps> and Brie, how would I get h final, the final height by itself? I think the final height is going to be v initial squared divided by 2g, which I think is the same equation we had a few minutes ago in a different question. It's going to be 11.53 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. Final height, 6.78 meters. No, is that wrong? Right? Okay. Sadly, on roller coasters, they don't have slow-moving cars that you crash into, because that'd be a great ride. However, if you're ever on bumper cars again, that's great momentum collisions with almost equal masses. The cars 
have a big enough mass that the difference in the mass between the passengers probably doesn't make that big a difference. And you can decide, well, head on, momentum's cancel. That's why you both come to a stop. Or there are angled collisions, which you can push somebody sideways. I'm a, you've all been on bumper cars before, yes? Turn the page. Okay. Football. Are there, dare I say, some collisions in football? So great momentum. Okay. Example three. A 100 kilogram fullback is running with a football at two meters per second. He's met head on and he sticks to a tackler. Which tackler is more likely to stop the fullback? A 200 kilogram lineman moving at one meter per second or a 50 kilogram cornerback moving at four meters per second or both the same and convince me? Joel, what? Oh, Trevor, what? Trevor says the same. Trevor, I agree with you amazingly. Convince me. Convince me. They both have the same momentum. First of all, how much momentum does the fullback have? And yes, I made up nice numbers so we can do the math on it. How much momentum does the fullback have? 200. If we bring him to a stop, how much momentum must he finish with then? Zero. So we got to get rid of 200 kilogram meters per second. We have to apply an impulse of negative 200 kilogram meters per second. How much momentum, Trevor, does this guy have? Mass times velocity. How much momentum does this guy have? Mass times... Okay, so the same. Each delivers the same impulse. They'll both bring this guy in a head-on collision to a stop. And you played football for a couple of years, yeah? Connor, you played football for a couple of years or no? Less, okay, so Connor, which tackler will cause more hurt? This is the more interesting question to me. A 200 kilogram lineman moving at one meter per second or a 50 kilogram cornerback moving at four meters per second. Which one will cause more hurt? Hurt is not in terms of momentum. Hurt is in terms of how much kinetic energy because the kinetic energy has got to go somewhere too. Where's the energy going to go into? Work. Work was what times what? Force times distance. More kinetic energy means more compression of the force over a distance. More rib crushing, essentially. So, what's the kinetic energy of this guy? If you go a half mv squared, what's the kinetic energy of the lineman? on your calculator really quickly, or you might be able to do it in your head. Trevor, what'd you get? 0. 0.5 times 200 times 1 squared. I guess you do. Trevor, stop, stop. What's 1 squared times 200? Half of that. Okay, this lineman has 100 joules of energy, and assuming he comes to a stop afterwards, that means he's got to send that energy somewhere. Where is it going to go into? Hurting the player. Deforming the player's rib cage. Force times distance. What's the kinetic energy of this cornerback? Well, that's also going to be a half mv squared. So Trevor, this one I do want. What's 4 squared times 50 times a half? Sorry? 400? He's got way more kinetic energy to burn. And those of you who watch football, who makes the most spectacular hits? Why free safeties and not cornerbacks? Because free safeties actually have a little bit more, considerably more mass than a cornerback and almost as much speed. They're the best balance between extra mass and maximum V squared. The cornerbacks, although they have a little bit more V squared, they're almost always pretty light, often very short, like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, where often the free safety is about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, and probably about 30 pounds heavier and just about as fast.
That's why those are the most spectacular collisions. So, kinetic energy equals hurt. Okay. So for those of you who are football fans, now you know. And I think I mentioned this last time, but I'll say it again. The real freaks are the people with a lot of mass who can also get a lot of velocity. In the 80s, there was a linebacker named Lawrence Taylor. He was an athletic freak. He was 260 pounds, and he could outrun the running backs. No one had ever seen anything like it. One of the only defensive players to win most valuable player. He changed defenses forever. Nobody had ever seen anything like that. In the 90s, there was a running back for Kansas City named Christian Okoya called the Nigerian Nightmare. He played for about four years, five years, but his knees couldn't handle it because he had so much mass. But he was six foot five, 260 pounds, and could run like a little, I think he ran a 4-3. Like, nobody had ever seen anything like that. Those are the really unusual athletic specimens where they combine the best of both worlds. Example four. says, nasty scholarship question. A 15-gram bullet traveling parallel to an inclined ramp strikes a 2.74-kilogram block of wood and becomes embedded in it. The impact drives the block a distance of 26 centimeters up the ramp. The ramp is inclined at 28 degrees, and the coefficient of friction is 4. What's, this is an example of a scholarship question. We're not going to solve this. All we're going to do is dulp and talk about it. Okay, so we have a ramp like this, with a block of wood. And it says the bullet is traveling parallel to the ramp, so the bullet There's the bullet. It hits and it sticks and it drives the ramp, sorry, it drives the block and the bullet sticking together up the ramp a distance of 0.26 meters. It says 26 centimeters. So here's, what do they want you to find? Speed, and thankfully not velocity because you have to angle, but speed, okay? What's the speed of everything here at the very, very top? Zero. Do you know how far it travels? 0.26. Wouldn't you be able to go winner minus loser and, and find the net acceleration using friction and mg parallel and all that? And if you knew the acceleration, which you could find, it's acceleration after the collision, and you know its distance, and you know v final, you could find v initial, how fast it was moving up the hill. And once you knew v, v initial, you could say, there is a collision, I can work my way backwards and find how fast the bullet had to be traveled. It's a tough question. We could do it. This is not fair game. So let's make a little note. Not even as a nasty multiple choice, this would be overkill. But this is what the scholarship exams used to be like. Does that make sense, my explanation? No, we could. We, we could. It'd be a lot of work. So. Sample five, I'm going to pass on as well because it's Christmas. It's also a nasty scholarship question. We're going to talk about it. Oh, you guys are zoning out. Okay, fine. What's your homework? Number one. Now, take a look at number one. What's B asking? Sorry? 
how much work. What B is saying is, first of all, are they in a nice straight line with each other? Work equals the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. There is no change in potential. Find out how much kinetic energy there was before the collision. Find out how much kinetic energy there is after the collision. And the difference is how much work was done in deforming these in heat in sound. Okay? So try number one. I haven't done one like this with you. Curious if you can figure it out. Two is good. Four is good. Nasty. Five is good. Well... 